What's going on Central Unit? It's Central Man here. So this is my review of AEW's Full Gear 2020. So we're going to start with the kickoff show match first. Um, they call it the buy-in. Uh, we got Serena Deeb defending the NWA Women's Championship against Allison Kay. Um, I need to address the whole NWA uh, situation. You know, that'll be in a future video. It's kind of bugged me a little bit. Um, anyway, uh, so this is Allison Kay's first pay-per-view match in AEW. I think she did decent. Yeah, this match was okay. It wasn't like fancy or fantastic. It was okay. Um, in the end, uh, Deeb retained the title. She locked Allison K with a I think it was call it the Serenity Lock. It's a one-legged Boston leg crab leg crank. Uh, so Allison K tapped out. Deeb retains the title, and then you got Thunder Rosa showing up, uh, confronting uh, Deeb. I'm guessing it's gonna be. Um, I'm guessing D defeated Thunder Rosa for the title not too long ago. Um, this is set up a rematch, whether it's on AEW Dynamite or on Power. Like I said, I need to address this NWA scenario. Anyway, so the first match to kick off the main show of Full Gear. Oh, by the way, um, um, Don Callis from uh, Impact Wrestling. This is his first um, AEW pay-per-view appearance. I don't know why... Don Callis is in AEW, you know, I don't know his contract expired, um, anyway, I don't want to get into it, so it's good to see Don Callis in AEW television, anyway, he's on the commentary team alongside Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone and Excalibur, so the first match to kick off the main show of Full Gear, we got Kenny Omega versus Adam Hangman Page in the finals of the World Title Eliminator Tournament. Winner gets a shot at the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. This was a fun, decent opener. Um, it was back and forth between uh, Page and Omega. I feel like one more of the match, um, you had uh, Page hit Omega with a powerbomb on the ramp outside of the ring. Um, I think Page kicked out of the, I think it's called the Tiger Driver 98. And then Omega kicked out of the uh, Dead Eye. Um, you know, I think every time, um, Paige was going for a book shot, Omega countered it. Um, in the end, uh, Omega hit the one-winged angel onto Adam Hammond Page to win this match. And Omega gets a shot at the World Heavyweight Championship. Whether it's, uh, Moxley or Kingston, you have to wait until later on in this review. So, yeah, it may, I, I, I knew Omega's going to win it because I think, you know, yeah, Paige, I can see him winning the title in the future because he almost won the title um, at All Out last year against Chris Jericho. Um, so, you know, it's good to see um, two former members of the tag team uh, fought one-on-one, -on -one, you know. You know, I don't know it's going to lead to another rematch. It could lead to a rematch down the road. You have to wait and find out. Um, anyway, so the next match, um, we got Orange Cassidy taking on John Silva, representing the Dark Order. I think this match should be on the buy-in instead of the NWA Women's Championship match, you know, between uh, Deeb versus Allison K. I'm not a big fan of Orange Cassidy, you know, he's just more of a comedy act. John Silva of the Dark Order, for me, he's kind of like vanilla. That's for me, you know. Um, yeah, this has felt like a match on Dynamite or Dark. The match was okay. It was an okay match. Um, you know, you know, mostly the whole bulk, you know, Silver has some offense. Uh, uh, Cassidy, uh, really got his comeback. I think he hit like a, I think the announcers call it a Stung Dog Millionaire. I know it's a playoff to, uh, Slum Dog Millionaire, the movie with, um, the guy from Skin, I can't pronounce. I'm not going to get into it. Oh, anyway, so, in the end, I uh, think he, uh, oh, uh, sorry, Cassidy hit the, um, the orange punch and a beach breaker onto Silver to win this match. Like I said, it was an okay match. Could be a lot better. I think it was better off on the pre-show instead of the main show. Anyway, that's match number two. Match number three on the main show. We got Cody Rhodes defending the TNT Championship against Darby Allen. This was a good match. Um, I feel like one more of the match, uh, Darby Allen hit like a footballing tackle suicide dive onto Cody. 
uh, Cody kind of worked on the arm of Darby Allen. Like in one more of the match, um, he kind of Darby was going like a move, uh, but instead he. You know, Cody counted it, he picked him up and throwed him outside of the ring. He kind of landed on his arm on the ramp. And the whole bulk, uh, really some bulks of the of the match, he had Cody work on the arm of Darby Allen. Um, and I think Darby trying to lock Cody with the sleeper. And Cody basically did a move off the top rope. Um, and by the way, he hit like a sick crossroads off the top rope. Um, I think he uh, Darby Allen kicked out. Uh, Cody came out of the coffin drop by Darby Allen. Um, in the end, um, you had Cody was going for another crossroads at, uh, attempt, but uh, basically Darby Allen counted it into like a roll up. Um, it was a roll up battle back and forth between Cody and Darby, but Darby managed to get the victory, and he becomes the TNT uh, champion. Um, it's a good to see Darby Allen. I think if they are building Darby Allen as the top star, I think he's going to be a top star in the future. You know, some people compare Darby Allen as the next Jeff Hardy. You know, I want to see it down the middle in the future. You know, Jeff Hardy versus Darby Allen. You know, maybe uh, you know, D you know, Jeff Hardy passes the torch to Darby Allen. You know, the both are uh, daredevils. Um, and then you know, basically at Cody in the end, kind of bend down one knee and handed Darby Allen the TNT Championship. And then you got Taz came along, basically he brags about, he kind of belittled both Card, uh, Cody and um, D uh, Darby Allen, basically talking shit. And then they got attacked by both Ricky St uh, Sparks and Brian Cage. Um, I feel like they throw Darby Allen into the Full Gear logo. And then there was, a, I think it was, they're going near uh, Darby Allen's uh, car. He, they're trying to break Darby Allen's arm, you know, trying to slam his arm near the car door. And then you got Will Hobbs chasing uh, Ricky Sparks and Brian Cage away. Is he going to lead to a heel turn for Will Hobbs joining Team Taz? You have to wait and find out. Anyway, moving on to match number four, I think. Yeah, match number four. We got Hikaru Shida, Akoto Shida for short. Defending the AEW Women's Championship against Nyla Rose. This is that rematch from Double... Uh, no. Yeah, Double or Nothing. Sorry. Um, this match is not on the same level as their previous match at Double or Nothing. That was good. That was more physical. It was good for what it is. Um, you know, one more of the match. You had Ficky kind of hit um, Sheeta in the leg with the Kendall stick. And then right the whole box of the match, you had... Nyla kind of work on the leg of Sheeta, like the knee, like she kind of crank her knee near the ring frame, yeah. You know, after they exposed the ring apron, um, yeah, she had kind of selling the leg injury. Like one more of the match, she kind of hit like a drop kick onto Nyla Rose, out of the ring and into the onto the stage or the ramp. Um, I think like they kind of play being cocky in this match. Basically, like a Nyla hit the beast bomb onto Sheeta, pull her hair back, and Sheeta did the same thing. She hit like a, a falcon arrow. I think they call it the avalanche falcon arrow off the top rope, and Sheeta did the same thing. Uh, I don't know why. Um, you know, it's uh, you know, it's kind of getting. I don't know. I don't want to get into it. Um, uh, in the end, you had the Ficky kind of tripped up Sheeta. Um. Nyla was going for trying to charge Sheeta, but Sheeta got out of the way. She accidentally hit Ficky. Uh, I think uh, Nyla kicked out two. I think she kicked out the Falcon Arrow and then two knee strikes. Uh, I think Sheeta hit the sh knee strike for the third time to win this match and retain the AEW Women's Championship. It makes sense um, to have Sheeta winning the title, uh, retaining the title, sorry. Like I said, I like the, uh, their match at. Double or nothing way back in June. I think it was, you know, it was physical. This was okay. It was de slightly decent. You know, Ficky interfering in this match. Um, it was okay. I, I was not bothering about it. Um, you know. And then afterwards you got basically, you know, Ficky arguing with Nyla. And Ficky slaps Nyla. Is it leading up to a breakup between Nyla and Ficky Guerrero? I don't know why they teaming up. Because it didn't do nothing for Nyla, because Nyla barely showed on uh, AEW Dynamite. You only show, like, Sheeta and Nyla only shows up, like, being part of the crowd, instead of in a match or a segment. So, anyway, I don't know who's the next challenger for Sheeta for the AEW Women's Championship. I think it could be Britt Baker, 
maybe they need more challenges in the women's uh, uh, division. That's another topic for another time. So moving on to match number five. This has got to be, for me, match of the night. Um, we got FTR, uh, that is Dax Wheeler. No, Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler uh, defending the um, AEW Tag Team Championships against the Young Bucks. If the Young Bucks loses, they'll never challenge for the Tag Team titles ever again. And uh, by the way, uh, Tully Blanchard is now banned from ringside. This match, match of the night, um, the FTR kind of worked on the injured leg of Matt Jackson because they injured Matt's leg uh, a couple weeks ago on Dynamite. And also in this match, uh, I think it was Cash, that was the formerly known as Scott Dawson, injured his wrist in this match, or his hand in this match. Um, it's like, one, like in the last stages of the match, um, I think it was Matt was going for like a kick, and Cash was going for the punch, and they're both like selling the, um, the, the leg and the hand. Um, it was really back and forth between both tag teams, near for, a lot of near fours. Uh, the Young Bucks hit like a, they hit the uh, Twist of Fate, they hit like a free, the 3D, the uh, Twist of Fate and the Swanton Bomb. It's really paying tributes to the Dudleys and the Hardys because they, I think the Young Bucks grew up uh, watching the Hardys and the Dudleys. You know, it's like in like 20 years ago because I'm, I'm guessing they're in their mid-30s, the Young Bucks. Um... Anyway, um, um, I think like one more of the match, um, they were going for like the Meltzer driver, um, uh, but instead I think it was Dax, uh, kind of powerbomb Matt Jackson through the announce t table, not announce table, but the timekeeper area, and then, uh, I think it was Cash hit, they hit like the mind, uh, breaker onto, uh, Matt Jackson, uh, no, Nick Jackson, I think. I think Matt, I think Matt's one with the dark hair and Nick with the brown hair. It's getting confusing. Uh, anyway, uh, one of the young bucks basically got the basically their leg on the ropes just before you know the free count. Um, in the end, the figure was Matt Jackson, the the dark haired young buck, hit the super kick onto Dax. It's that uh, Dash Wilder uh, to win this match, and young bucks become the tag team champions. It's really shocking because, like I said in my predictions, it they kind of back themselves in the wall. Because on one hand, you know, they just won the tag team titles at the previous pay-per-view All Out. But at the same time, it would be so stupid if they lose this match. I'm talking about Young Bucks here and never challenge for the tag team titles ever again. Cody, I understand. But Young Bucks, not too much. So, anyway, in the end, you had, really, at the, sorry, at the uh, end of the match, really, at, oh, I'm trying to say after the match, sorry. After the match, you had Kenny Omega celebrate with the Young Bucks, and Hamman Page is basically lurking in the uh, the ring entrance. In um, so I know that's not. Is it leading up to a heel turn between the uh, Omega and the Young Bucks or Hamman Page? Because they're playing it really so far in 2020. Um, uh, I don't know. Is gonna lead it to it? You have to wait and find out. It's getting really old. So like I said, it was a match. A match of the night. Good. Uh. Really good match because Young Bucks are high flyers, FTR, the techno style workers, and both Cash Wheeler and basically um, uh, Matt Jackson really sell their injuries damn well. Uh, anyway, moving on to. Yeah, you can tell the show is starting to pick up in its second gear. We got Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara in the Elite Deletion match. This is the first Deletion match. Um, since, really since 2018 in the WWE, um, it was really good, it was entertaining, like, the fighting in the Hardy's com compound, you had the, yeah, they were fighting outside of it, they were fighting near the fountain area, yeah, the private party, uh, interfered, you had Santana and Ortiz helping, um, you know, the, uh, Sammy's fellow Inner Circle mem member, um, yeah, uh, there were, you had, uh, really a cameo of, Gangrel and the Hurricane. You know, Gangrel is the first time in a any type of wrestling television show for almost really for years now. Yeah, he might showed up on an indie show, but not on a major wrestling TV show for nearly I say until since WWE. I think it was like I think it was Taboo Tuesday 2005. Um, anyway, so. Um, and then you've got basically Sammy Throne, um, basically. 
the hurricane into the lake of reincarnation. It came back as this um, reporter, and then he throw uh, Gregory Helms back into the lake of reincarnation, and he's back as the hurricane. Um, they were basically had Matt Hardy throwing kind of shoots fireworks onto Sammy Guevara. Like it's good to see uh, Vanguard won the drone because he got destroyed by Chris Jericho in Matt Hardy's feud in the summer. Um, you got uh, Stan, was it uh, Starsguard, the um, basically the uh, the boat making his uh, cameo appearances. You got like props from previous deletion matches. Um, you had basically you had Sammy Guevara choking the bottom rope onto Matt Hardy, and then he hit the um, the Swanton bomb. And then they did like the same spot with what they did at All Out. And Sammy's uh, head was bleeding. I don't know if they botched it. They kind of cut in the last minute. It looks like, you know, he, I don't think he's dead. It looks like something like he's killed. But um, in the end, Matt Hardy basically smacked. Really did the Cochento onto Sammy Guevara uh, to win this match. And afterwards, you got like the private party and uh, Matt Hardy. Basically, I think he put Sammy Guevara in a bin. And then they kind of drove off, and it was good to see Signor Benjamin drive off, and then you got Rebby and and Private Party kind of celebrating with the um, there was some fireworks. I think one of the members of the Private Party kind of like like had bottles of champagne. So yeah, I'd rather have Sammy Kvar winning it, but wow, the Inner Circle man. I'll get to the Inner Circle a bit shortly. It's just like wow, Sammy Kvar so far haven't lost, haven't won a match in AEW. So far in 2020, I think this should be um, this match. I don't really care if they like do the rubber match. If they do the rubber match, fine, do the rubber match. But I'm thinking this is the end. You know, if they did the rubber match, it'd be too little, too late because Matt Hardy won twice because they he won that last man standing match at All Out and won the, this match at Full Gear. So moving on to match number, uh, yeah, match number eight, I think. Uh, we got Chris Jericho versus MGF. If MGF wins, he'll be part of the Inner Circle. The match was disappointed um, because I give them credit. They tried, but this is a match you probably see on Dynamite, not on your pay-per-view. That's people spending a lot of money. Uh, one more of the match, uh, Jericho was going for the Judas Effect onto MGF. Outside of the ring, near the ring post, but NGF got out of the way. Jericho hit his elbow onto the ring post. I remember there's some bulks of the match, MGF working on the arm of Jericho. I think Jericho hit a Frankensteiner onto NGF off the top rope. Um, and then Jericho locked uh, the walls of Jericho onto NGF. I think he reached the ropes or, or basically he powered out. I uh, don't remember. Um, in the end, you had uh, Wardlow basically throw NGF the ring, Hager throw Jericho the bat, but Jericho basically, you know, they, you know Eddie Guerrero, um, sorry, MGF did really pay tributes to Eddie Guerrero because this month marks the 15th year since he died. He did like, you know, looks like Jericho hit him with the bat. And then you got the female referee, Andre Edwards. Really, you know, Jericho was arguing with the, the female referee. NGF did the roll up onto Jericho to win this match, and NGF uh, is now part of the inner circle, and same as Wardlow. Like I said, I, I wish NGF was form his own group instead of a part of joining a group. I don't know. It might they might turn things around the inner circle. Uh, wow, Jericho in 2020, man, he's lost single matches. I'm talking about singles matches in AEW. I think he won one or two matches since Orange Cassidy, but on a pay per view, he's lost four. Pay-per-view matches so far. He lost the world title to John Moxley at Revolution. The Inner Circle lost the Stadium Stampede match at Double or Nothing against the Elite and Matt Hardy. And he lost to Orange Cassidy at the last AEW pay-per-view all out. And now he lost to NGF at this pay-per-view. So, hope 2021 will be Jericho's year. Who knows, but MGF, man. So, he's part of the group. How is he going to fit it? I'm going to let it play out. Is it going to lead to a rematch between Jericho versus MGF? Maybe, you know, Jericho turned babyface. He get kicked out of the group. And MGF will be the new leader of the inner circle. Who knows? So, moving on to the main event. The main event 
We got John Moxley defending the AEW World Heavyweight Championship against Eddie Kingston in an I Quit match. Good match, but there's one one flaw. I think with you know I watch a lot of I Quit matches in the past. They always like you know referee has the microphone you know, but it kind of hurt hurt this match for me. Um, it was physical. Um, you know I think like basically I think Eddie Kingston's paid tribute to Tracy Smothers who died recently. And uh, Moxley grabbed like he really brought in a barbed wire bat. The the fight outside near the crowd. I think they did like a move onto the concrete floor. They're trying to choke out each other with like cross face, uh, rear naked jokes. Um, yeah, like like with the referee, you know, you can't really tell if they're saying I quit or no. I like that type of concept, but without the you know the referee pointing the mic into the um the wrestler's face, um, it's kind of hurt this match. Um, for me. Um, uh, anyway. Um, it was, like I say, it was physical, like, one more of the match. Um, basically, Kingston set up some chairs, and Moxley suplexed Kingston into the piles of chairs. Um, there was a, a really attack, a thumbtack spot. Moxley took that bump into the thumbtacks. I feel like Kingston grabbed, like, this chemicals. I think the announcers call it, um, uh, sorry, the commentators call it rub alcohol. He put it in the back of John Moxley. I thought it, I thought it was bleach, because you know I, I think Moxley's back could be burned because it's flammable. Um, yeah, Moxley bled in this match. Basically, I think like Kingston throw okay, they shoved Moxley into the ring post. He bled, and he kind of used the um take the um the barbed wire out of the bat and used it like used the the back. I think it's called the back forearm sh shot onto Moxley. I don't know what it is. It's basically like a forearm shot or a backhand onto Moxley while using the um the barbed wire as the weapon. Uh, in the end, Moxley hit the paradigm shift onto Eddie Kingston and choked him out with I think it's called a bulldog sleeper hold onto Eddie Kingston and Eddie uh, submitted. He said, "I quit." Moxley win this match and retain the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. He pulled, he really uh, helped uh, Eddie Kingston back up. He kind of backed off and left. And then you got Kenny Omega, uh, Kenny Omega showing up. This this is going to be, they're going to pick up what they left off uh, between Moxley and Omega because they're the best rivalry in 2019. That kind of really put John Moxley on the map as in the company. He was, you guys, he entered, he entered AEW as a heel. And then in 2020, he was a babyface. Um, that could be good to see. I, I want to see this renewed rivalry between Moxley and Omega. It's a one. If, I got to it's a one-off, but you know, I, I could see Omega winning the title. I, I think was it been two years since he last won the world title. This was in 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 New Japan. Um, I think they feud in Japan. I don't know if they feud in Japan before AEW was formed. Um, anyway, so. My final rating for AEW Full Gear 2020, boy, I got. I probably give it a boy. I'll give it eight and a half. I think this is way better than uh, double. Uh, no, not double. Nothing. Uh, sorry. Um, it was way better than All Out, the previous uh, pay per view way back in September. Um, the top three matches were good, like um, FTR versus Young Bucks. Um, the main event was good. Yeah, you know, like I said, that without the referee not using the microphone, microphone in the I Quit match kind of hurt this match for me. But it's still physical and it's told a good story between Moxley and Kingston. I'll probably rank it third. Second place, I have to go with the deletion match between um, Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. It was entertaining. He had some decent matches on the show, like uh, Cody versus Darby Allen for the TNT belt. That was good. Um, and I think, uh, and then also, yeah, and I almost forgot, yeah, Omega versus Haman Page, the opener, you know, that was a fun opener. Um, the match, there were no bad matches, but the, um, actually, she, I put Sheeta, I put Sheeta and Nyla Rose in the good as well. It was slightly good, but it's not, like I said, it's not on the same level as the, um, the, uh, a double or nothing match. That was good. Um, this was okay. It was slightly, it was slightly good. But the only two matches I put okay has to be the NWA Women's Championship match between, um, uh, between uh, I almost, I almost forgot the the women's names, Serena Dib and Allison K. And then I put I put Orange Cassidy and John Silver. It was okay as well. 
And uh, same as Jericho versus MGF. They did try, but I feel like it's a match. I like the uh, the Cassidy, Silva, and Jericho, MGF matches. They're better off on Dynamite, not on your pay-per-view that people spend a lot of money. Actually, a second thought, I don't give it 8 out of 10. I'll give it... Yeah, actually, I'll give, actually fuck, I'll give it 8, 8 out of 10. I think it's still better than Double or Nothing. Uh, yeah, the next pay-per-view will be in the following year, in February of 2021. That is the next Revolution pay-per-view. You have to wait for another... Three months, I think. So yeah, um, if I rank this, uh, rank the uh, so far AEW pay per view so far in 2020, I think show of the year for me, for AEW has to be Double or Nothing. That's number one. Number two, Revolution. I put this show, uh, Full Gear as number three, and then number four I have to put All Out. Yeah, like I say, it wasn't a bad show, but it was de It was a little weak. Um, anyway, so, hope you enjoyed my review of AEW's Full Gear 2020. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section below, smash the like button, and subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube. Next week, uh, really next Saturday, I will do my review of AEW Dynamite. That will be the aftermath to Full Gear. So, yeah, this is Central Man officially signing out. Yeah, subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube for more wrestling videos, live streams, game streams, and more. So... Check you later, folks, and thanks for watching.